miss the playoffs very often, Bruce. What is this like for you? I don't like it. No, I mean, uh, usually you want to play in May. Um, that's always what was my first thing. So let's play in May. And uh, but uh, uh, May started so far this year. Like I mean, it's usually at least the second round in May. But uh, uh, no, I'm. You know what? Uh, I haven't missed the playoffs, and uh, the goal is to make the playoffs, and then the goal is to win in the playoffs. And um, it's so it's. Uh, it's 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 not fun, I, but I do think we put up a pretty good fight to get there. And you know, we'll, like probably a lot of us, coaches, players uh, alike, will look back at the year and say, if we had just won that game, you know, I mean, and that's what happens when you start out bad. And I think uh, it'll it'll make for a real good um, uh, uh, motivator for the the start of next year for this team. I don't know whether you had any self-doubt about the t during the time you were out, but going 32, 15, and 10, did you affirm or prove anything to yourself? Or well, yeah, it did. It uh, it's funny because when I when I left Minnesota, it was really a, a bad taste in my mouth. And um, when you're a year out and you interview for a couple jobs in the summer and you don't get them, you you just wonder like. It, the people think of the time has passed and or, or what have you and then coming back and having that kind of record and um, and having the team play the way they did in a lot of different areas uh, positively it makes you believe that when you go home that uh, you did well and that you still can do the job and and the other thing is you know you still have the fire in your belly and and the desire to do the job and you can still handle the stress of the job and uh, you wake up every morning, can't wait to get back to the job, and that's what I found out. Once, once I started doing it again, is is I couldn't wait to get to work. And uh, sometimes you don't realize how much you love something until you don't have it, and then you get it back and you realize it. When you look at what you accomplished down the stretch this year, what are you most proud of coming in here and turning things around? Well, I I think the, the biggest thing is is uh, the the team. Um, believing that they could win every game and it didn't matter who was in the lineup whether we had uh and taken nothing away from the Abbotsford guys because they did really good for us but I mean whether it was four or five different ones at a time in, in the lineup and and whoever was out that but they came to the rink the players thinking that it didn't matter whether we played Minnesota Calgary Colorado anyone any one of the the really good teams in the west that we thought we could win and the games that we really thought we had to win, the playoff games, uh, Dallas, we beat them uh, twice, and Vegas, we had five out of six points. Those are, those are games that were a little playoff games for us, and, and we succeeded, whoever was in the lineup. That, that makes you feel pretty good that the players came ready to play. Bruce, when you uh, took over the bench, uh, Elias had four goals in 25 games, and in the first week he scored in back-to-backs. He talked yesterday Bruce, about uh, a lot of self-doubt, uh, not having the, the confident level that he normally played at, maybe the contract impacted that and expectation. Uh, knowing all that, when you finally had a chance to talk to Elias, what, what was your message to him? Because he, he certainly seemed to embrace it. Well, it's a simple message. I kept telling him, you, you, you're a great player, and uh, you just do things that come natural to you. I mean, we will take care of the rest. I mean, sometimes, you know, he's an offensive guy, and, and when he's not scoring, he, he sort of cheats on the offensive side of the puck a little bit. But, I, you know, I would talk to him about that. But we wanted him to feel comfortable and put him in a position to feel comfortable and put him in a position to succeed. And once he started getting into those positions and succeeding, his confidence level grew up and you, uh, grew, and you could see how good a, a player he was. Like, I mean, the nights that he got three points or four points or whatever, and, and just finding guys uh, uh, in spots that, like, I mean, such a good passer, but uh, having um, such good hockey sense of anticipation, which uh, also made him really good on the penalty kill. That, that was my next question, because usually when a player is struggling, you tell them, well, do something else you're good at, and that will mm -hmm. work in transition and get you scoring. 
you put him on the PK, which he, had, he talked about yesterday. He's never really played it before. Mm -hmm. and you guys go from 62 to 80 percent in the second half. Was that a conscious decision to put him on the PK to maybe that would get him going, or the fact that you saw a guy who reads passes so well, gets sticks in lanes, well, be a I, threat? I didn't really think that at the at the beginning, but I've always always revert back to me being a player and uh, uh, thinking that I knew what I could do and what I couldn't do, and so I asked. Um, the players and, and a lot of times, I mean, what are you thinking? Uh, where can where can you help more? And he said, I think I can kill penalties. And so I'm always one to put the ball in their court then and put them on and see if they can do it. Because if they can't do it, then they can't come back on the coach and say, well, you never gave me the opportunity. But it's always good to give them. And Quinn Hughes was the same way. He thought he could kill penalties. And so let's let's try it. Like, I mean, evidently the other thing wasn't working. So, I mean, this was a this was a good thing to 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 try. But once you started watching him and it seemed like every second or third game he'd get a partial breakaway killing penalties because he could anticipate the uh, like the great thing I think about him is he knows all the breakouts on the power play. So when he saw them forming, he could he would be taking chances, but he could he, he could get in those lanes and, and intercept or break the plays up and um, Sometimes we always look at uh, penalty killers as guys who block shots, who, you know, does all, do those kind of things. What great, great defensive players. But I've, uh, you know, Nick Backstrom was a great penalty killer. And, and, um, uh, it, and so, well, other than, you know, Kessler. But, I mean, we had Getzlaff was a good penalty killer. These guys are good offensive players that can read plays and, and, and uh, uh so I always thought that they could they could do it and and if they feel confident and they're doing good at it then the rest of their game is going to be good as well. Last thing on Peter, you got to know the player. What mm -hmm. did you learn about the person? Well, the person I got to know him pretty well. Like I mean, I know he's a shy person and uh, uh, he's quiet, but I think there's a real fire that makes him want to be the best. I think, uh, you know, like a, he may not ever look at it or say it or show it emotionally when he does have a great game, but he, he wants to be the best. And I think that fire is going to really uh, be evident in the upcoming years for him because I think he's, uh, I think the way he finished this year, he will start out if he, there's no salary negotiations for next year. The, if he stays healthy, he'll come to camp in, tremendous shape and he'll want to start the season off uh, great I think the power play if it stays intact there's no reason with the those guys that were on it that they couldn't start off doing the same kind of thing that they ended up doing and which was you know I think uh, we were number one in the league from the all-star break on I think at 30 percent something like that so I mean I don't see I, I think this, that should be a really good starting point for him. Bruce, you said uh, you didn't really want to discuss your future until the end of the season. Oh, dear. Now it's the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> Where do well, things I'm going home Wednesday. That's what I can tell you. Where do things go from here, though? I mean, there's a suggestion that there's, you know, you both sides have options here. I mean, do you, do you want to step back and survey the situation, or are you no. the head coach of the Vancouver Canucks? Listen, I told Patrick uh, and Jim that I wanted to coach here next year. So, I mean, um, we're just talking right now, and uh, uh, I'm sure uh, hopefully things, things get done. But I think, that's, uh, I think they want me back, and I, think I, wanna, I know I want to be back, so I think it should work out. Thatcher was great for you all season long. We heard from him yesterday that he was playing with a bit of an injury down the stretch. What does that say about him as a competitor fighting through and trying to help the team win? Well, yeah, I mean, he knew we were in the in the hunt, and like every game was a game seven, and he didn't want to he didn't want to leave us. Uh, uh, so that being said, like I mean, uh, he ha he had an injury that was probably not helping him, but uh, at the same time, uh, his competitiveness showed through, and he wants to play, and that's. Uh, what makes great players great players is playing through that and not letting anybody know that they're that they're not feeling up to 100 percent. You talked about that fire that you see with Pedersen. Do you see it with Demko? Yeah, well? he he wants to he wants to be the best. I can picture him. Um, I can and I haven't talked to him about this, but it's because he's a quiet guy. But he works so. I've never had a goalie that is out there so early, works so hard all the time. It does not doubt to me that he wants to be the best in the league and 
when he sees other people doing good, he wants to be better than them. All of that said, though, I mean, you ultimately want a guy that's at peak performance for 20 plus more games beyond the regular season. Do you have to dial his, his workload back? I, you know what? I think there's a. I hopefully next year this won't be the situation that we're in that we're fighting to have to win every game. And uh, if that's the case, yeah, you know, I'd have to talk to Ian about it and, and make it a day-to-day -day situation. But if you're asking me in a perfect world, you'd like somebody to be able to play 25 games and him 55 games and then be able to run with the, the guy for 27 or 28 games in the playoffs. I mean, that would be the ideal thing, I think. Bruce, we, we know you as a coach. You came in, you worked with the group that you had with very few changes. I mean, Mott left and there were... You know, Dermot came in and Richardson. Um, but if you are the head coach moving forward here through this summer, like how involved are you in the discussions of roster construction and sort of a wish list for what you want for the team that you're going to coach? Well, I mean, probably not very involved at all. Um, that's, that's not my, my job. My job is to coach whoever's there. But if they ask me for my input, I'll definitely give it to them. I mean, I, I will uh, always in the past. I'd give them a w give the teams a wish list. Now it's up to them if they if they don't believe in that wish list, they go somewhere else. I'm fine with that as well. But I mean, uh, uh, you know, like I mean, if I said, hey, listen, if we could get that McDavid guy, you know, like, <laughs> like go after it, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, um, I'll go over with the the management group. Uh, um, of what I think of when I give my report on, on what I think of all the players and where they stand and where in, in a team of mine where they would they would look and uh, but they'll have that input and it's up to them to uh, to do with what they want with it. Bruce, in terms of sort of the general sentiment of, of what you think this team would need to get over the hump next season. Um, what would you be willing to share in, in terms of the basic principles that would guide your putting together that list? I, I just think um, after a while, I think the, the depth, uh, if you look at all the good teams, depth is a real big thing. And um, maybe, maybe, that, excuse me, maybe that would be some, something they would look at. In terms of the, the staff that you've inherited, uh, obviously, you brought Scott Walker in, but what can you tell us about working with some of the other assistants, um, including in Clark, uh, during the course of the season and, and what your plans might be uh, for that? Well, first of all, I have no plans for that. I mean, uh, um, Ian Clark was, it was great to work with. I mean, I've never had a goalie coach that was so involved um, with, his, with his goalies, and I thought that was really a pleasant surprise. Uh, usually a goalie coach will, uh, that I've had would take a guy out couple days a month early and uh, and maybe have a meeting or so with them but was there to listen to them I mean Ian's uh, on top of it right away and uh, uh, he has more meetings and ex expectations from the goalies and I think that's that makes them better Bruce, yesterday um, Brock Besser shared with us some of the weight that he's been carrying with him emotionally over the course of the season um, can you give us a sense of any kind into your conversations supporting him throughout this year? Well, I just support him over the course of the year. I would just I would tell Brock that if he needs time, if he needs time away, if he, he has to go home, let me know, and we'll make it happen. Because I mean, the biggest thing if you're having any, uh, if you have like a core covenant on your team, the first thing is always family first. And uh, I firmly believe in that, that this is a game. We all love the game. We all work for the game and get paid for it. But your, your family is the most important thing. And he knew that. Um, and, you know, obviously it was tough on him. I mean, if you look at his, you know, it starts out with a, holding out a little bit. And when you don't have a full training camp, it's really difficult. And then you have this on top of it. It's a, it's, it makes for a, a long, tough year. And... Uh, um, I think Brock will be great next year, and uh, and uh, I hope everything goes well at home. But he knows that we he has our support for anything he needs at uh, when he goes home. Culture and leadership were such a talking point through the season. How did you see the culture 
of the room evolved from when you showed up to where it was by the I mean, I don't know what it was like before. I just know that uh, uh, my the way I am is uh, uh, I think I'm pretty positive and everything's about winning. And I think uh, it, it didn't take long for everybody to understand that it didn't matter what we did, it was about winning. And I think that's a, a, cul a great culture to have. And so uh, it starts with practice, it starts with uh, the will to win in every game. I think, uh, I don't know if I've already said it here, but I mean, you take away about four games, there wasn't a game we weren't in and battled to the end, whether it was the best team in the league or, the, or a team at the, the less. And, and, uh, a lesser team, but I mean, we fought to win every game, and I think it, at the end of the year, we came in expecting to win every game we played. Even when we won those six in a row and we went into Minnesota, we were sure we were going to win that game. And then when we lost that game, we were sure we were going to win in Calgary. It didn't happen, but uh, uh, that's the culture that I want to see. That's the, the, uh, the mindset that I want to see when players come to this team, that they expect to win because when you expect to win, if you see somebody not working as hard as you or doing things that you, you're capable of, you're, you're willing to do and they won't, you let them know. Then the leadership in the room becomes bigger and stronger and uh, it uh, becomes the way, the way you play and the way you live. Were there any guys that found the room? You talked about PD and Thatcher being quiet, but were there guys in the room that found their voice, so to speak, as leaders that emerged as you know, time went on? That, that as we went, as we started winning, you could hear more in the room. Um, it was more of a, a real positive room rather than uh, a negative room. And uh, there was no woe is me anymore. It was like whoever's hurt, the heck with it. Somebody else is stepping in. Whether it was an Abbotsford guy or not, he was expected to do the job, and, and they were. But even like guys like normal quiet guys at the end, like Chase on, and I mean, everybody respects his voice. He's won a cup, and when he started playing and, and doing well, he started talking, and, and Milsey and, and Horvat, and everybody was, uh, like, taking part in this, in this thing where um, the Luke Shens and the Tyler Myers and everything, it was all a group of, of guys uh, pointing in one direction. Not not one moment. Like I'm not in the room a lot, but I mean these are the things I I hear when I walk by and when the players tell me, you know, hey, listen, we're ready, you know, because I'd talk to them and I said, you ready tonight? You ready tonight? And said, we're we're all set. The room is great. Let's let's get at it, you know. So. Is that what excites you most about this team and this group? Because you mentioned that you want to continue coaching the Vancouver Canucks when you asked about when asked about your future. Um, and you, you have a great track record. You win more games than you lose, which is hard to do at this level. But is it this culture, this leadership that uh, excites you about coaching this team going forward? I think the excitement is, is you look at most of the guys are really young and their future is brighter. And I think they ended the year. I was talking this morning. You ended the year not making the playoffs. But... It's very rare that you end the year, you end the year not making the playoffs, but on, on a very positive note. And I think they'll take that all summer, and they will look to come back and be a different team in training camp and at the beginning than they have been in the past. And uh, um, <clears throat> I think that's going to be the biggest factor is that this summer they're going to come back and they're going to expect to win. And the reason I like it is because the youth of this team is uh, is so uh, so good. If you look at all the great teams, I mean, look at Tampa, for instance. They got the best goalie, they had the best defenseman, and they had some of the best forwards. You look at the Vancouver Canucks. They got a great goalie. They got one of the best defensemen. They got um, three great centermen. Not too many teams have that. And, I mean, with a couple little tweaks here and there, I think this team can be very, very dangerous next year. What happens in your exit meetings, Bruce? Are you very much a, a to-do list kind of guy, or how open are you to listen to players to say, you know, Bruce, we did this, but maybe we could do that? How open are you? I'm open to any, like anything to make the team better. I've told, uh, I tell uh, Jim this when we had our meetings, and, and Patrick, if you have a suggestion and it's going to make our team better, I'm all in. I'm all in about 
whatever helps the team to win. And if the players have a suggestion for me, I write it down and I'll implement it right away. Like we were talking about Pedersen and the penalty killing. I will implement it in training camp. I mean, uh, um, so far the players have been uh, sort of reluctant to tell me what, what we need to do uh, if they believe that there's things to do. They, they've really liked what has transpired so far and they can't wait for it to continue to transpire like that. So, uh, but if they had to come in and said, Bruce, you got to do this, this is awful and we got to change it, I would sit there and I would uh, uh, mull it over and probably change it unless I was adamant that this guy was nuts. <laughs> if this is about culture or leadership, but Connor Garland said after the Edmonton game, he said how Quinn Hughes gave a speech, I guess you gave him the belt. Yeah. And, Seattle, and he got up and astonished people by talking about culture and leadership. Did that, I mean, we talk about these guys as kids. He actually looks like a kid. But mm -hmm. did that surprise you at all? Or what did you, what do you make of that moment? Um, you know what? Uh, I, I thought it was a great moment. It was a grow up moment. And, uh, um, you know, he, he's a great player, but he's going to evolve as he gets older, and I've seen it ha happen, I keep using his name, but Nick Backstrom was the same kind of thing. And then and by the time he was 26, 27, like he was uh, uh, not only a total pro and a great pro, but he was now people, everybody was looking at him for um, uh, when, he when he talked, you know, people were listening. And I think that was a, a great grow-up moment for Quinn. Like he, he realizes now how good he is, and he realizes where he is in the... Uh, uh, the pecking order of this team, and he knows he's going to be a, a leader for years to come here. Bruce, who's taking the uh, belt home for the offseason? I have no idea where that is. Like, uh, uh, if I knew there was a good wrestling show going on soon, I'd bring it home myself. But uh, uh, I think it'll probably stay here. This is something that it's a year-to-year -year thing, and I, I presented it this year. But, I mean, next year, if they have a different – idea like a, whether it's a hat whether it's whatever uh that's up to them it's usually uh something from within the team that that they feel comfortable with i just uh my son had the belt and i thought and i went in one game to his and seen how the reaction was and i said if i coach i'm going to get this belt and and see how it works and it and it worked but they may choose something different next year um, we had three different things in, in Minnesota when we were going and uh, when we were doing it, from a belt to a hat to, um, uh, I think there was a big bone, uh, it was one of them. But uh, uh, so it's, yeah, so like, I mean, but it's a player's thing. But I wanted to implement it this year because we hadn't had one before. Hmm. You, are, you made it clear that you're a, a hockey guy through and through. And we talked about out of town scoreboards and all that kind of stuff. Do you consume as much playoff hockey, or is it tough to? I'll be honest. It's usually uh, uh, it's usually tough for the first round, but then I'm glued to it. I mean, it's just you know you're clenching your fists and your toes every time you're watching it and saying that you should be there. Uh, this is usually in the second round if we've lost in the first round or something. I mean. When we lost in the third round, I couldn't watch the finals because I felt we were better than Chicago and we would have won the cup. But, you know, stuff happens. A prediction? Pardon me? Do you have a prediction? No. Stanley Cup champ? No. There's, no. There, you know what? The, the top teams, probably more in the East than the West, but, I mean, any, you look at those teams, they're all great teams. So anybody could win. I don't think there would be an upset when, and I've referred to it before, when we – when I was in Washington, we got upset by Montreal. That was a real upset. It would be like, you know, uh, uh, when the Kings beat Vancouver. That was an upset. But uh, uh, I don't think if, if Washington is in eighth place and Florida is in first place and Washington beats Florida, yeah, there will be an upset, but not a big one. You know, I, they're all great teams. Bruce, you've talked a lot about uh, Quinn Hughes and this availability here. I'm curious what he does for the rest of the defense core. We talked to OEL and Myers yesterday, and both of them said they were able to kind of change their game and be more of a lockdown defensive pairing after being offensive defense for most of their careers. What kind of impact does Quinn Hughes do to the rest of the defense the way that he plays? Well, he, he allows that uh, to happen. Like, I mean, 
Uh, OEL doesn't have to be the guy that he was in Arizona where they're counting on him on every power play and he could, you know, he could, he could sit there and be a, a, a shutdown D. Um, uh, Luke Shen was just, Luke Shen is, is not only a great teammate, but he's also like a very steady player. And that's what Quinn needs is a very steady player. And, and, uh, and, and, um, Shenner would do a lot of the protecting, but so, I mean, it allows them to, be more themselves and they're not when you've got a Quinn Hughes you don't have to look and say I have to score to help this team win I just have to defend and be a good defender and he'll do the rest when you look at that pairing of OEL and Myers playing together how how much can it help a pairing like that when they play a full season together and can look forward to next year potentially being a partner partners I, again I think it I think it does great great things like I mean just talk to OEL and we you know, it's a real um, transition when you've been on one organization for 10 years and then you come to a wholly different, totally different organization. And the adjustment period takes upwards of a, a year. I don't think it took that long, but it took a long time for OEL. So I think starting off next year already being in this organization, Connor Garland took a while to now that he's starting. I mean, all of these things starting next year is really exciting for the players, for me, the coaches. Um, we're looking forward to it. After a strong finish to the season, what do you hope Pod Colson can gain from AHL playoff experience? Um, well, I've been in that boat quite a few times too, where guys come down and um, it's a, uh, uh, the one thing about Pods, he goes out and he wants to play every night, and and that's a great thing. He's not, I don't think after our discussions, he's thinking of it as a, a demotion. We want him to to feel what playoff hockey is like, and uh, my worry is that is is that sometimes if you haven't been in the American League and you go down to the American League, you think it's going to be easy, and it's not going to be easy. The American League in the playoffs is very very difficult, and uh, but if they could win. The excitement of winning, the excitement of the playoffs, I think will really benefit him a lot for us for next year. Bruce, almost universally in the last 57 games of the season, um, a lot of these players played some of the best hockey perhaps of their careers. Uh, Niels Hoaglander would sort of be the one exception, a, a guy who in his first 100 games mm -hmm. uh, was sort of an everyday top six guy for this team, uh, didn't play uh, near as much, and then obviously ended the year um, injured. In terms of where he needs to get to to get back to that level, in your view, uh, what are some things you're hoping to see from him entering next year? Well, I mean, I, I, talking to him, I mean, one of the things we wanted to see a little bit more is a 200-foot game. Like, I mean, um, I think he's capable of scoring 20 goals, but he's one of those guys that when he loses his confidence, didn't want to shoot the puck. And, you know, he, you know, he, I was trying to explain to him that it's not all about points you can be a really good player without you know when you don't score but he's always thought he's had to score and so I mean, hopefully he's going to come back in great shape he's going to he's a talented young man I think I think he'll be better next year than than he was this year again it was an adjustment when I came in for him maybe I had different expectations than than Travis uh but um uh he he went through I told him I said you're a guy that gets mad uh, when when I give you crap. And he agreed. Like, I sat him out the one game in Chicago. He was great in Nashville the next night. If I'd sit him out, like, I mean, sometimes it's a it's a uh, tough love type thing to get guys to play where they, they, they should be. And I, I, think, I think he's learned a lot from that. And I think he'll be a better player next year than he was this year. That it? Okay, goodbye. Hey, thanks for everybody uh, for treating me pretty well this year. So, uh, I, I, I.